Welcome to GC204, Lecture 6, Theories of Remembering and Forgetting. Introduction. In this lecture, we are going to learn about remembering and forgetting. Theories of remembering and forgetting, factors influencing remembering and forgetting, and causes of remembering and forgetting. This is because learning may turn into futile exercise if what is learned is not utilized soon or later. For the material learned to be used, it must remain in the mind stored up to for use when the need arises. Without good memory, man will not be able to retain previous learning. Hence, the subject of remembering and forgetting is a general human problem. Objectives At the end of this lecture, Learners should be able to 1. Explain three theories of remembering and forgetting. 2. Explain remembering and forgetting. 3. Discuss the causes of forgetting. 4. Discuss the classroom implication of remembering and forgetting. Teachers are not only interested in students learning facts, concepts and relations but are also interested in their retaining and using what they have learnt. Theories of remembering and forgetting. The world would be a chaotic take two. The world would be a chaotic place to live in if there were no memory. Many psychologists have tried to theorize on how individuals remember. Some of their views are summarized in this lesson. Meaningfulness Theory of Remembering and Forgetting Eben Hall's Experiments on Nonsense Syllables In the 19th century, Eben Hall was the first to put up a theory on memory and forgetting. He claimed that any material or items that is or are meaningful to the organism will be remembered, that is, nonsense syllables are meaningless to the organism. Meaningful materials or items is or are better remembered than less meaningful materials or items. Exercise Theory of Remembering and Forgetting Edward Thorndike was another psychologist who theorized on remembering and forgetting and he referred to it as the theory of disuse. He advocated that when one is not making use of a material, skill or item, the tendency is for it to be forgotten. The act of making use of materials or items will keep the memory fresh, but after doing away with it for some time, there is the tendency to forget the meaning or make improper use of it. The Psychoanalytic Theory of Remembering and Forgetting This theory has been put forward by Sigmund Freud, a psychoanalyst. Freud argued that pleasurable experiences are light and being light, float on the sea of consciousness, and as such will be better remembered and recorded than painful experiences, which are heavy, and like every materials, we sink below the sea of subconsciousness, and so will be less remembered and recalled. How students can be helped to remember what they have learned? How can people help to ensure that students retain or remember what they have learned? Actually, since the degree of retention depends to a large extent on the quality of initial learning, ability to remember hinges on some or all of the following. 1. Review Ability to remember improves significantly with repetition, practice, and or systematic review. Considerable repetition and early review are particularly important when factual information is involved. 2. Methods of learning. Verbal and numerical materials are remembered much better if they are organized into categories or groups of some kind than if they are simply left in random order. 3. Interest. The intention to remember what is learned facilitates remembering, at least 
If interest is present before students learn, the teacher also should endeavor to create interest in the student towards what he teaches and stress the important point during teaching. 4. Recency or frequency. This could be regarded as a lapse of time between learning and recalling, that is, the time lag between when learning takes place and when it is to be recalled. 5. Mnemonics. There are, however, times when children are expected to learn things which are dissimilar and unconnected. In such cases, mnemonics aids may be useful. A mnemonic aid is a trick to help memory, which consists of inventing a way of linking together unconnected facts. There are various ways in which this can be done. One way is to put them in form of a rhyme. For example, 30 days at September, April, June, and November, or by fitting them to a rhyme of a tune which is familiar. 6. Health. The state of health of the concerned learner is very important, as it will affect his or ability to remember, recall, or recollect. When in good state of health at the acquisition stage, it will be easy to retrieve at the recall stage. 7. Imagery. This is forming an image of an idea, information, and or knowledge or concepts in our mind through the use of the five senses, that is, eye, hear, tongue, nose, and skin. 8. Memory. This is the ability to store facts that relate to a particular object which can be influenced by the strength of the association formed at the stage of initial learning. The stronger the stress of association, the easier the ability of students to retrieve the information. Factors influencing forgetting. Forgetting is the failure to retain what has been acquired or learnt. If an individual fails to remember what he has learnt in the past, it means the individual has forgotten. Forgetting therefore means the failure at any time to recall an experience when attempting to do so or to perform an action previously learned. Forgetting is the opposite of remembering and essentially a failure in the ability of reproducing. Information is permanent once acquired but they may or may not show up in performance. An implication of this is that nothing learned is ever forgotten. Although common sense tells us otherwise, like learning, forgetting is poorly understood despite much attention and research. Some researchers claim that a true process of forgetting exists and those associations can be broken and lost. However, most scientists reject this notion because it implies that something existing in the brain disappears. There is much evidence against this idea, even though everyday millions of brain cells, just like other cells, die. The more accepted theory is that forgetting associations still exist in the brain and are not functionally retrievable because they have been surprised by other, most powerful associations. For example, most children use the word "comed" instead of the word came for a time. However, later language learning provides much repetitions and reinforcement for the word came, so they overlearn it and use it automatically. Most adults do not remember using the comed when they are children, and their parents can tell them that they did. There is much present research on how associations are forgotten because of interference from other associations. Summary In this lecture, you have learned about why people usually forget what they have learned in the past and how the students can be assisted by the teacher to remember 
or recall earlier learning. End of lecture 6. Thank you for listening.